Hello, Michael Bull here with the Commercial Real Estate Show. We're at ICSC Recon 15 in Vegas, the retail event of the year for ICSC. We have today Ann Hamley with us with First Service Solutions, right? Right. And uh, we've had her on before. Great information. And one of the things that are, is in the news that some people are concerned about, a couple people excited about maybe, are the maturities coming up in the CMBS world. What is the volume of loans that are coming due in the next two or three years, Ann? Oh, there's like 350 billion of CMBS loans coming due in the next three years. It's pretty heavy, yeah. yeah. And how many of these loans might be in trouble? Uh, about half, actually. No, no, it's pretty scary, yes. A lot of them. And are a lot of these loans uh, retail? Well, yeah, a big component of them are retail because, um, yeah, probably I think a quarter of them are retail, actually. Okay. Yeah. So if you have a, uh, a CMBS loan and you might be underwater a little bit, you may have trouble uh, paying off that loan, you know, what should you do? Well, the first thing you should do is if you don't already have a concrete plan for how to pay the loan off, um, you should approach, actually you should approach an advocate ideally, but you should approach the servicer as soon as you know that you don't have a concrete plan um, so that you can uh, get the loan transferred to the right party, start having discussions about it, and um, figure out what you're going to do about it. You should not wait until right before the maturity date. So, you know, prepare early, contact the servicer early, and um, start discussions as early as you can about, you know, paying it off. I mean, yeah. that's good advice. I mean, I've talked to, to some owners and they and uh, ask them about it. And so, well, you know, that's not for six more months. Oh, <laughs> I'm like, gosh. Uh, uh, yeah, that, that's pretty soon, right? <laughs> yes, 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 exactly. And a lot of times there's other things going on, like yeah. there might be a tenant that's, you know, starting to have a lease expire and maybe they have a vacancy and they've got, you know, a lot of other things going on. So there's a lot of moving parts besides just the maturity. So, you know, they got to address all that together. Yeah. Yeah. And I think a lot of borrowers too can be concerned that nothing's happening, right? They're calling their servicer, they're not getting any feedback, uh, they don't really know what to do. And sometimes it's because you haven't done the right, made them, taken the right steps, you haven't made the right contact, right? Yes, or you haven't filled out the right forms. Um, I always say it's like, I mean, these loans, these CMBS loans are in an IRS vehicle. So it'd be like if I, I always tell owners, it's like if I did my taxes and on April 15th, instead of filling out the right form and sending it into the right place, I prepared an email and sent it to my friend at the IRS and said, you know, I owe too much money, but you know, I owe you money. And so I'm going to wire it next week. And you know, I, I think I've done all the right things. Um, I'm going to still get notices and I'm going to still be in trouble with the IRS. But in reality, I did what I thought was right, but I didn't pre prepare the right forms. And so a lot of times owners are doing what they think is right, but inadvertently they don't know all the right things to do. So. Right. And a couple of people might think that this is old news, but this is not old news. This is new news. This is what's coming up, right? So tell our listeners about that, because these loans were done about 10 years ago in the heyday when values were high, right? And they're coming due uh, with a 10-year maturity that's coming up this year, next year, and the following? Yes. Actually, these loans were made in, yeah, in the heyday. They were made when, um, well, there was, uh, they were made typically interest only, so there's been no principal pay down. They were made um, based on um, you know everything going only better in the world. They were based on rents uh, go getting higher, not lower. And we know that rents have done everything but that. They've gone you know down. Um, they often had a Sears or J.C. Penney's or you know um, gosh, we could think of all the different tenants, Circuit City, you know all the big tenants right in place. Those those have maybe gone. So uh, they had probably no reserves. And so now you combine all that together and now you've got value decline, you've got maybe empty tenants, you've got rental decline, um, and you had no principal pay down. So it's, it's kind of a potential disaster for, or recipe, excuse me, for, you know, disaster or at least uh, underwater situations. Right. And you mentioned uh, getting out and, and handling this way far in advance. So how much in advance should you go? So I've got a maturity in 2017. Can I put that off or should I start thinking about it? You should think as soon as you know there's a problem. So if even if today you know your loan maturing in 17 and you're confident or pretty sure you're not going to pay it off, you, you don't have the ability to pay it off in 17, you should contact someone like uh, you know us as a borrower advocate to talk about your options as soon as possible. Okay. No downside. Well, 
And what if I'm an investor and I've identified an acquisition target and it has a CMBS loan and I know this loan is underwater, it's going to have uh, trouble, what should I do there as, an, as I'm an acquirer? Well, the good news is you can acquire those loans for sure and you can assume them. Um, you can also defease them, but those are gen that's generally way too expensive. But you can assume those loans, um, and you can't pay them down, so that's the good news. So you can assume them with no mo pretty much no money down. But you will have to have some kind of plan for how you're going to pay it off at maturity. Um, what you can do now, too, though, is wrap into that acquisition an extension of the maturity date. So at least you can you know, get some time built on um, to, the, to the current loan term so to allow you to hopefully you know, reposition the property and then pay it off. Okay, and you've been an advocate for borrows in the CMBS world for, for a number of years. You've got a lot of experience, and I know that that's very helpful when dealing with these servicers. You have a servicer background as well. What about loan assumptions? I know a lot of the, the deals we're selling, we have a CMBS loan to assume, and, and we get into the process sometimes, and, and it's not going well. Mm -hmm. uh, so what do you do to help borrowers in that situation? Well, I'm, I'm glad you asked that. It, the most the most common misunderstood the most common misunderstood fact about a CMBS assumption is that it has nothing to do with uh, the approval. It has nothing to do with whether or not the buyer can get a new loan. So a buyer could be the most uh, qualified new buyer on the planet, and that has nothing to do with the approvals. And all our buyers are. Of course, yes. <laughs> I knew that. At Bull Realty, you would only have qualified buyers. <laughs> um, so the buyers could be the most qualified buyers, but the whole approval process is all about making sure the CMBS trust that the loan is in is no worse off after the approval, after the new buyer is in, than they were with the old buyer. So for a minute, assume the current owner's Bill Gates, just using that as an example. Well. I don't care how qualified anybody is, they're likely not going to be able to replace a Bill Gates and not have the trust a little worse off. And some buyers might not think that because it, it, there's no personal guarantee anyway, right? Well, there's a carve-out guarantee, no carve -out. and the carve-out guarantee has financial net worth behind it, and they do look to have an equally uh, qualified new replacement guarantor. So if Bill Gates, and, and it, likely that's not the case, but I'm using that as an example, Bill Gates was your carve-out guarantor, Currently, um, who are you ever going to find to step in and replace him that will not be, uh, will not, will that will leave the trust in as equal of a position? It's not going to so, happen. Yeah. So how do you mitigate that issue? There's lots of ways to mitigate it, and and I could go into lots of examples. But the point is, and I can do that in a second. But going into an assumption, usually, uh, here's the, here's the situation. Anybody going into an assumption, generally, no one has. Uh, the view of both sides of this equation ever, uh, other than the servicers who buyer and seller are negotiating with. So you're, there's an absent party in a CMBS assumption if you don't hire an, ad, an expediter or an advocate. That's Because really, yeah. the servicer's not that motivated, right? I mean, are they motivated to, to help that assumption along? They're motivated, all of them, to protect the bondholders. So yeah, they're motivated, but they're protecting someone else. They're protecting the bondholders. That's their job. Right. So doing nothing can sometimes do that. So right. How, mu how much time do you need, typically, uh, should you account for to do an assumption on a CMBS? Well, uh, you mean if, if, uh, if an advocate's involved, if I were involved, it's from signing of purchase and sale to approvals of 60 days. If we're not involved, I've seen it take, you know, equally double that length of time to get approvals because there's no, uh, it's like putting a bunch of players on a field playing football and no quarterback. Nobody's calling a shot. So I, God only knows if you ever really get a touchdown. I don't know. It takes everybody, everybody's doing their own thing and you never know who's calling the shot. So, you know, it's missing, it's missing a key player without someone involved. And it just because no one, no one is quarterbacking and no one sees both sides of the equation. So you don't know really what you're submitting, you know. Yeah. Well, excellent. And if you're listening to this on the radio show, check out the website. We've got some uh, slides. It'll, we'll show you the magnitude of this issue and the maturities coming up. And thanks for joining us today. My pleasure. Thank you, Michael. Always a pleasure. We appreciate it. Well, Michael Bull at ICSC Recon 2015. This is the Commercial Real Estate Show. The Commercial Real Estate Show is brought to you by Bull Realty Commercial Advisors, a great place to do business. Visit bullrealty.com. Realnex, a comprehensive and powerful suite of commercial real estate tools at an incredibly low price. Visit realnex.com. That's R-E-A-L-N-E-X.
Excelligent, the resource professionals use for commercial real estate information. Visit Excelligent.com. That's X-C-E-L-I-G-E-N-T. Commercial Search, the source to market and source available properties for sale or lease. Visit CommercialSearch.com. For more information on these great companies or for additional videos, podcasts, or articles, visit CREshow.com.